Everybody all ready? Exactly. Call this meeting to order at 1801 South County EMS on Thursday, November 21st. Hi, everybody. Want to vote on the minutes of last week's meeting? Yeah, were meeting? you... Tom, did you get interrupted on something? Huh? Did you get interrupted on something? Were you nope. going to ask something? Okay. Nope. Yeah, so I think... Uh, uh, the minutes from last meeting, I don't even know if I printed them out for everybody, unfortunately. <coughs> I don't think I did. From uh, September 19th? It would have been the, yes, September 19th meeting. Carolyn, Matt. Oh, Matt. Yeah. yeah. It's this guy right here. He wasn't here. I was here. I was here that day. I wasn't here. Well, I was he thinking about here. Matt today. Yeah. We haven't heard you weren't here either. either. Sure was. Were you here? Oh yeah, you were. Yeah, he was here. Yeah, you were here. I wasn't. Bobby wasn't. Yeah, Bobby wasn't. That was off a week. But nice job anyway. So on what? On the minutes. Thanks. <laughs> Is that a motion? No. Well, as soon as we, I'm assuming we take off, we correct the attendance. <laughs> no, no, no. Matt was here last week. Last, last month ago. Oh, Matt September. Oh September. my God. September. Sorry, Matt. September 19th meeting, Matt Year of here. Our Lord, 2019. Matt was here. Yeah, Matt, Matt was here. Oh, Matt was here. Of course you were. I was talking about voting. But I'm not Matt. <laughs> Dave? No, you're not. You're Dave. Why am I looking at you saying Matt? Because we're having a... This is a... Senior moment. You stopped at the Scottish bar before you got no, here. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem. I haven't had those in a long time. I think I heard so, Jonathan say he was a... Second. I'll make a motion. Any uh, additions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion. Director's Second. report? Great. Hi, right, folks. Uh, I printed out a copy of the director's report. They're stapled together with some of the other stuff um, that'll be referenced inside. Uh, the International, we placed it back in service for about four days and then uh, started throwing an unrelated alarm. Um, I know. The uh it's really bad. I know. I know. So it, it's uh it's out of service for emergency response right now. The uh the short of the long of it is that truck does not have air brakes on it, but the chassis is insisting through the alarm that we're all out of air pressure for the brakes. <laughs> so clearly there's something and nutmeg is is like it's fine you can drive it it's erroneous there's your brakes work there's no air but i'm like okay it's just so until we can get that sorted it's not in uh, response duty at all emergency response duty um so there's that and i think february late february is still the anticipated delivery date of the replacement truck so that's holding steady it's a ways away it's already almost December. <laughs> Light at the end of the tunnel. Um, uh, we did recently, in short su succession, uh, go to Amherst twice on mutual aid calls. They had two fires, and they're waging a rather public battle right now about staffing at the fire department. Whenever they have a major incident, such as a structure fire, all of their resources go to the fire. Um, which then means all of the regular everyday calls that they're all still going to then go to Northampton Fire, Belchertown Fire, and South County EMS for medical calls. Um, so that was two times in like as many days, um, but that was kind of it since then. Uh, we may, remain committed as a mutual aid partner um, to all of our neighboring communities. And if you look at... Um, our runs. I did it. I broke it out those month by month for you, John. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think our mutual aid to Amherst, I mean, historically, it's so small. Um, and even in the 2019 statistics, it was so <laughs> infrequent that I bumped it down to the other column. That's fine. So, I, you know, it's we, we went twice. It was kind of high profile for us going there recently, but uh, it's it's not even really a blip on the radar, so uh, there's that. And any time that Amherst has that going on and we end up going over to Amherst, it means that Northampton and Belchertown 
are also taxed. So typically what we do is as soon as we're getting dispatched to Amherst, we will send a tone out for available personnel to come and backfill just because we're anticipating that as a region, the resources are getting taxed, so. Um, Wouldn't you do that anyway with, with any kind of call? Well, the short the answer is, yeah, yeah, well, the if we have somebody signed up for callback, they, they come in automatically. Um, that's pretty infrequent that we have available people of, like who sign up for callback. So when there is an incident where we think we might be busy with something tied up, we will send out an additional tone that just says, hey, no, seriously, if you're around, uh, we could use you in this moment because we anticipate that we'll be um, busy for an extended period of time. Um, let's see, staffing, I just wanted to share, I, I just printed out one copy each and I forwarded the electronic documents, but uh, we worked pretty hard uh, as a department, as the mentor staff, to create I shouldn't say create, I should say update our orientation program. So we're required through our affiliation agreement with the hospital to have a training or orientation program. Obviously, we need to be able to document that people are getting the training, but um, ours is particularly robust and enumerates everything that is you know, a basic level competency that people need to be signed off for. And this is whether you're a brand new EMT or you're a long practicing paramedic and you're new to our service. Uh, what I'm particularly proud of at the beginning is there's a major emphasis on um, like cultural competency, public interaction, um, a commitment of both the department to the employee and the individual and then back um, and kind of meeting halfway and making sure that everybody's, um, me, uh, everybody's requirements are getting met. And, I, and that really speaks to the culture that we have at this department and what makes people want to work here. So it's it's listed out uh, right out of the gate. People kind of understand the environment that they're going to be participating in. And then piggybacking off of that, uh, I've created a uh, performance appraisal worksheet, which is uh, annual review. And this was put together. It's a combination, an amalgamation of um, various public sector public health places. So the Community Health Center of Franklin County uh, in Greenfield, they utilize a system like this and it's mostly pulled from the United States Department of Health and Human Services. So this is the way that they evaluate their employees. And uh, I've tweaked it to dovetail into our orientation program. Our orientation program is designed not just for new employees but also for remediation that we can refer back to it. And so this performance appraisal worksheet dovetails in that it, it reflects kind of our values and our morals and our ethics that are in the orientation program. And I really value, as a department head, um, individual growth, not just in the field of EMS, but kind of like holistically. So there are questions in this annual review that are, you know, like in the next year or the next time, in what ways do you wish to grow yourself as an individual and even just you know like and it's it's kind of amorphic it's just open-ended but it I, I hope will encourage people here to be like oh like holistically right work-life balance you know what I'm really interested in taking an art class or something and if that's something that they wanted to put down great they're still being evaluated and judged on their capabilities of an employee and their technical skills and things like that but to kind of encourage the fact that we're we're all individuals and Part of a bigger family so that's good uh, the plan right now is I'm gonna do all the full-time staff will meet one-on-one -on -one. Uh, I'm not gonna ask them to fill it out on their own and then meet together and then fight over who's right we're just gonna sit down one-on-one -on -one, um, and go over it together and that'll also be an opportunity to just privately be like hey what are your thoughts how's how am I doing how's the department going you know what are your areas that are are um, standing out to you. Uh, so I would do the full-time staff in December um, and then eventually I would like to you know get everybody but with a roster of 32 people I mean you know we've got another 20 something uh, part-timers um, I'm gonna put that off down the road but the idea being December so if we ever as a town get into the place where we're um, basing 
raises or steps or, or things like that yeah. on performance that, appraisals yeah. Yeah. that with the habit of these occurring in December will be in time for budgeting and then the new fiscal year come July. And the calendar year is a nice way to kind of think about these things as well. So I actually think that as part of a, an employee <laughs> performance appraisal, it shouldn't be anything but absolutely mandatory that there also be a place for them to write down something about their supervisor. I don't, sure. th I don't think it should be a voluntary thing. It should be part of of the, the performance appraisal because it, it goes both ways. That's, yep. that's my personal opinion. Yep. Just, I mean, I, I appreciate you doing it sort of as a sidebar conversation because yeah. it's good relationship building, but I, 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 I genuinely, because I know I appreciate knowing, I mean, I think the school should do it. I think everyone should do it. Um, knowing what employees feel their supervisor is doing right and what they're doing wrong. Yeah. And, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think uh, we need to do it in an environment in which they feel comfortable criticizing. You know, like I like cri critiquing. Yeah, well, criticizing too. You know, I, but yeah. you could do one of those three hundred and sixty things. You know, a yeah. year or something. Yeah. Or I yeah, really I, I totally agree. I'm just kind of brainstorming well, my head now. Because the, the environment issue doesn't doesn't wash kind of because you're asking them in a one-on-one -on -one how they're doing as well so or how you're doing as well sure. so it's it, it, you, right i think i guess like if if we're going to if we're going to really put it in writing and use it as a tool i want to make sure it's an honest uh, absolutely thing. Yeah. A yeah absolutely you know and and maybe maybe you pull in a boo member or something yeah i, I don't know what i don't know what that is but or our mentor staff i mean we could use a lot you know whatever yeah. yeah 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 cool no, that's just me. I don't know. You guys. Well, might no. I. In, but evaluations. It's interesting about you know Zach. You know, kind of come up with talking and work through the evaluation together. But there's something to be said for um, someone doing an eval a self evaluation, and you would do an evaluation at the same time, because um, typically I find that people are tougher on themselves than you are, on the whole. The second thing is. If 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 the if Zach thinks um, a weak spot is X, and that employee <coughs> thinks X is also his area of strength, then there's a disconnect. Right. And and that that needs to be and that needs mm -hmm. to be discussed. So and and so do can he actually do the task? Has he been ever? You know, he may not know that he doesn't know how to do the task. So it, it's interesting. It's interesting because sometimes. Self evaluations, if they're taken seriously, um, are, are a great tool to use. Be, and especially between the man, because the manager says, the manager says, you know, Jonathan thinks he's the world's greatest chef. I think his cooking stinks. But, right. And, and so, and then that's a part. That's a part where that you'd start having that discussion. Right, and find out what's subjective, what's objective, and all those kind. You dig deep. You drill down. Huh. Yeah. And and, and 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 but I know I know what Zach is saying. A lot of times, if you have you know, well, whose evaluation is going to go in my records? And it's like, well, I'll put both of them in the records. I mean, I do, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, there's only, you know, it's, it's fine. You put both both in the both in the records, but it, it it allows it does allow for, you know, seeing what people think are their strengths and what their weaknesses yeah. are. That was that collaboration is is what I'm envisioning sitting down with them. Mm -hmm. You know, and like in real time being like, I you know, I think you're doing really good, but I, I think I have to give you a three on this for these reasons. And then they would be like, Oh, I'm good on a five and then you have that discussion and, and yeah, you and you share that. Fine. Um but you're right, you know, I uh I personally hesitate to like, hey, fill this out, knowing that they might be harder on themselves. Um because of the I yeah most 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 employee most good employees are tougher on themselves than I know you. I know I'm just thinking about the yeah the, the danger is you're, you're right but then that's oftentimes that that toughness is oftentimes exacerbated when they're talking to their supervisor because they want the, their, their supervisor to think they're really tough on themselves so it's <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure that the It's why I take all the evaluations. I think they're important, but they're also I take them with a grain of salt because 
sometimes people will assess themselves wanting to score points that I'm so tough on myself, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exacerbate my toughness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is like absolutely a living document, right? I mean, we'll do this in December. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what how it goes. Yeah, I'm don't sure. take it as a criticism. It's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I see employees going both ways. Absolutely. You know, some of them are the best things in sliced bread, yeah. and you hate it when they come walking <laughs> through the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, they're here. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, and just like the orientation program, being able to fall back onto it for remediation and things like that. Yeah, you'll notice the the re the employee reviews designed as a one year, but mm -hmm. it's also designed to be used as a thirty day, sixty day, ninety day if we if that um, needs to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Budget season. Already. Oh God, budgets. How did they get here so soon? I don't know. It's like three Can months off from budget season. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've put together a first draft FY21 budget. Um, this is for, I guess, level services is how you would yeah. define it. You know, I'm always looking to see what additional things we can do for the community within our staffing, but um, there's no additional staffing or anything like that in this budget. Um, expenses are down. Um, from FY20, that's thanks to the new contract that we signed with Comstar um, for a lower rate thanks to our higher call volume. Um, and then some various tweaks uh, here and there, up and down, throughout the various line items based on um, the historical spending. Um, and then... Did you get any clarification on the uh, Franklin County retirement? So the Franklin County Retirement, um, the short and the long of it is, I really like that phrase recently for some reason. Retirement recognizes public safety as group four, which allows them to, anybody in group four can retire a little bit, you, a little bit earlier in that you reach your maximum 80% a little bit faster. Um, and there's also no minimum retirement age. But the, the way the law is written, it says public safety is police and fire departments. Mm. Yeah. So that's just outdated just nomenclature. Like yeah, that it hasn't been updated. Correct. So any... they updated the law to say that if individual towns wish, they can recognize their EMS departments as Group Four by a vote of the select board. Um, this isn't anything. The we don't have anybody coming up for retirement in the near future. The next people up for retirement wouldn't even benefit from this, just the way that their time works out. Group two, group four doesn't matter for them. But looking towards the future, uh, the question was raised with the retirement board, okay, this provision that allows a town to acknowledge their group four status, um, what's, what's the implications of that? What's the complications? What's the way that you go about doing that? So the executive director of the Franklin County Retirement Board was just gathering information, wanted to see the IMA, wanted to know how we were made up, who we were employees of, and things like that. Um, though we are, based on the language of the law, technically group two, when you retire, what happens is that's when they officially award you whatever group you are. So they say, oh, it was an oversight in the language of the law, judging on your, on your work description here, you should have been a group four, we award you group four. For the people that their years are such, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Um, but for generations to come, the fact that they might be graded a group four on retirement, but considered a group two up until then, means that we would have been shortchanging the system uh, potentially. If we are paying benefits, expecting them to retire at 65, when they actually retire at 62 or 61. And so it's just basically an issue of that. Um, making sure that we're holding up our end of the bargain in the budget, um, and also that we are honoring the job that they're doing as actual public safety, and we're not asking them to go and have to fight for themselves or get an appeal or something like that. For something. So the crystal ball is the reason for the 50%. <clears throat> The crystal ball is the reason for the 50%. We're not realizing the retirements. 
we're paying forward. You have a 50% increase in, in from fiscal 20 to fiscal 21. On the retirement? And retirement. Yeah, that's, ba that's just off of the formulas I have. So getting to that point, that line item, that 158 from 108, that's just off of the formulas. Barbara Hancock will eventually come back to me once she has the actual numbers from the retirement board and tell me what the real numbers are. You always down, they're always down grading. They're always less than whatever it is I estimated. Right. It's just 50% is a pretty, every finance committee in the world is gonna say, Hey, I know, I know, this, this, and this happens every year with this. I plug in these numbers, the formulas spit out these values, and it's never, it's never what it is. Um, the, only, the only thing that I saw that I, um, we, we talked about this last night, and we should have some consistent policy, but um, the Deerfield policy, of course, for OPEB is 4% of our yep. retirement account yep. now, so it's kind of arbitrary. Um, and I, I yeah. we we want to do a more robust contribution, or I do for sure. I, you know, Dave, we talked a little bit about it last night, and we're going to ask the personnel committee to, to review it. And so that could be, you know, coming up because we're trying to get this done for this budget year. And um, so we'll probably reach out and say, what are you guys doing? Do you know what you're? What I have you no doing? idea what ours is. We, no, I, I mean we put we I put mean, all, I, I all, but we don't we don't specifically put a, a line item dedicated for open. You don't. Well, we've been. I, I mean, I it's probably been four or five budget years that I've been flipping out about this because this number is so large, and um, so and I don't feel like we should allow it to be kicked down the. No, road. certainly not. So no. so we've been, we've we been eventually portion, I've, I've, we've been using a portion of our um, in in our. Free cash. We have a so we okay, use. So you don't have a set. You don't have a set formula. What what we've done is take. We last this past year, I we've got the finance committee to agree to four percent of our retirement. What we pay in retirement right now for medical expenses, because that's that's really your most ex, what the real expense is. And we're sending it aside an account. And the idea is that if we had a really bad year, you can use that money towards your retirement. So it's just not money sitting there dead so that was why the um finance committee was willing to go along with it but it's not enough and so um we're, we asked the personnel committee to review well that. the money should, wait, 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 should be wait, wait. investing the money oh yes it is but it's, wait, it's wait, wait. But, it, but it's not it's, but, but carolyn and in, in, if if you're telling if you're telling south county that we're going to pay four percent for the for the retirement is going to OPEB, but you're not really putting it in OPEB. You're really putting it no, for no, other. No, no. no, it's in the OPEB line item. But yeah, but you're not you're not applying it to OPEB though. It, it is an OPEB account. Line but you're item. not. But you're not. You're not putting it away in an account separate. It that, is. It is. But you can use it at at any but point. But then it's not an account. You can you, you think the town of Deerfield can use it at any point. Right. The OPEB account can be used at any point in the future for your retirement expense. Say say we had a very bad year. You could go to your OPEB, you could raid the OPEB account. Yeah, but town of Deerfield can use our money. No. This is separate in the OPEB account. Is South there a County. separate line item for South County in, the, in your OPEB yes. account? Yes, yes, there is. And so, if there but is with a formula, my, 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 what formula. I'm talking about is the actual formula that we're putting this in for. Okay, so if there was a bad year here, and and but we had, I, I don't know what you mean by a bad year. Well. A lot of people like 2000, 2009 was a bad year. A, a bad year is a is a year. No, it's not not retirement. It doesn't mean it's no, a no, bad no. Fin financially. Fin year. Financially, oh. remember two thousand eight and nine. Yeah, so probably. it would have been fiscal okay. fiscal ten. Remember the economy crashed yeah. and like our excise tax. W one of our main incomes is the excise. Tax okay, cars. so it dropped. It went, it went down to almost. People weren't buying new cars, cars whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we had we balance our budget on free cash. Okay, every year you're not supposed to, but we do, and um, 
because um, we're very conservative, so we always generate free cash, and we know we know that. Fine. So anyway, there really was hardly anything that year, and we didn't generate very much. Our, our receipts were not bad, but there was not okay, very okay. much low. So what we so that was a year that we just scraped by. Okay. I, I I'm with you. Keep going. Okay. So the idea is, if we had another bad year like that and you had to make your medical retiree payments, okay, your medical insurance retiree payments. You can go into your OPEB account and you can use it from what the, um, um, the legal uh, I, I, ability yeah, I, to pay, I get it. I, okay? So that, but what I'm saying- For fiscal management, I would not, I mean, you're just digging a hole that you're never gonna dig out of. Yes, but we'll hopefully never have a bad year, but I'm just saying that at the account, what were you? We convinced the finance committee to have a four percent formula, but it's not enough. And the basis of that was that the money was sitting there for our OPEB liability, but we could actually access it at some point. And now we got them up to four percent. So what we're doing is trying to, and that's what is in this budget. But what that's still not enough. And so we're having the personnel committee try to come up with a more realistic formula. And so this budget is a draft budget and we will at some point put in another formula that probably is an increase. I, I think that we should look at whether that, the formula that you use for your town employees should or could be different than the town, the formula we use for for this organization. It could be. It could because, be. Because, uh, well, wait, wait, let me finish. Let me okay. finish. Let me finish. Because if you are adding dollars in the event that things go south for your overall budget, which is what you're doing. Oh, well, yeah. And which is what you're doing. It can only be applied towards oh, your I, medical expenses. I, I, I get that, but I don't think we have the same issue here. No, we don't. So, at this point. So I, I don't, your personnel committee can do, and again, just speaking for myself as I'm following this, the personnel committee of the town of Deerfield can do whatever it chooses to do for Deerfield employees that are not scams employees, that are not employees that are not literally, but figuratively employees of all three towns. I think that we as a group should have a discussion about what what formula works for our realities of our budget system because it, it, it's very different than the realities of the town of And that's why I explained to you that this is a the Deerfield formula that we are under review. It's not, it will probably go up if we continue to use the Deerfield formula. If you choose to use a different formula, then we need to come up with a formula. I, I put a zero dollar amount in this in this draft budget for OPEP. I added the line item, but there's no I know there's well, no money but, in it. But right Zach, the, the 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 thing is, Deerfield, all of our towns have a retirement hole, okay. But what what I what I'm going to say right now is that South County EMS has only been five years. We don't have we're not going back thirty years. Why, so why are we contributing to Deerfield's OPEP? Solution. It's it's not Deerfield. This is well. It is because because so South South County right now we should say we should say what do we need to pay? We should we have to figure out what we need to pay to to manage a South County retirement benefit, right? Mm -hmm. And and so it, it should it should not be so Deerfield shouldn't be telling us. To pay the same thing as the entire the rest of Deerfield's paying. The rest of Deerfield's paying four percent. They have a long like Sunderland and Whiteley have yeah, long term. Have, right. But South South County EMS is a new organization, so we don't we don't have a history. So we're not we're not looking at that history. So we shouldn't be paying that same percentage that Deerfield or Sunderland or Whiteley is paying because we're a new organization. So we should be paying for that new organization. Does that make sense? Because we don't have a, we don't have a hole to dig out of. That's right. We right. Right. we don't we don't have now thirty years from now if we haven't contributed we'd have a hole. Right. Right. But we don't have a hole right now. Well, what I'm saying is that we use the formula that Zach would be using is the four percent, which is inadequate for Deerfield. 
Okay, or I feel it's inadequate for Deerfield. It is formula that Deerfield uses. If you have another formula, and that's why I was asking, if, you know, we need to sort this out. So, absolutely. But you can sort of calculate it by uh, our, our, our people, when are they going to retire, and what that, uh, you know, is. We, you Actuarily, know, you yes. can figure that out, right? Yes, yes. Right. So then, that, then if you want to pay that exact amount, why wouldn't we? We we would. Yeah. We. And then the. Because I don't want the people sitting around this table in twenty years to say, we got killed by these people. Well. I, no. I, right. And, and but I, 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 mean, think, I think we, that's we really should talk. We though. should probably talk to. I, I we should probably talk to Dale. We should probably talk to Dale and ask him to do to figure calculation. what it is right for right. Based on our absolutely. What's that? What are our obligations going to be? Five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road yeah. of retirement. Because there are actuarial <laughs> tables that can forecast that. Not to the dime, obviously. But right. Give you a rough idea. Give you a rough idea. The, the one uh, thing that I do yeah. wonder ACC whether period. there should be a written policy about, and it's not, don't take this in the wrong way. Please. No, uh -oh. please, please don't. Steve, now we're taking it the wrong way. <laughs> no, but. I'm trying to be. There I'm, should I'm, be. I'm honestly a, a, going to say something right now. No. <laughs> there should be a written them? policy well. that the scams money can't be used. It shouldn't be assumed. It should be scams money cannot be used to pay the the delta in a bad year, the budget delta in a bad year. For the town of Deerfield, and then, it wouldn't be a town of Deerfield expense. It would be a scams expense. I, I, I get that, but but there's there's uh, there's money sitting there. If we're planning appropriately, there is money sitting there it earning would be, investments. It would be inappropriate as well as illegal, I'm sure, for the town of Deerfield to use the scams OPEB. I can verify it with. You yeah, know, I the state, but I can tell you right now that the, the only oak count that should be a different line. Item it is a totally different. Right. All I, this stuff I get is that. separate. I, I get that. I, I totally understand that. I'm just saying, and I would say this: if, if Sunderland were the were the fiscal agent, no, or Waitley the fiscal were the fiscal agent, should there be something in writing that makes it clear and transparent to everybody that we've thought about this? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the reason, the reason why it's you, it's in a uh, the the account set up the way it is, is because whoever is on the board at that point could vote in a bad year. If we're if Deerfield is having a bad year, chances are Sunderland and Whateley are having a bad year, and so we might, as an oversight board decide that we want to pay our medical insurance that year out of our OPEB money. Right, of course, and for scams, which, I, which I think is a mistake. A but I, yeah. I agree, but I'm saying that the, that was one way that we were convinced our finance committee to put this money aside because we have all these pots of money and you're charging the taxpayers for pots of money and you're not, you know, and you're still raising your taxes. And But people need to understand that this is a commitment and even though this account grows large, it's it's not enough in the end. So anyway, I probably shouldn't even have brought it up. No one would have said anything. But <laughs> no, it's good we're to, using for it up. we're using the yeah. four percent formula, and and the reason why I brought it up is because that formula is going to change. Zach noted here that we use the Deerfield formula, and okay. and 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 I'm trying to get it changed. To be increased, and if you have a different amount, I mean, a different formulas. I know you guys have been putting some money aside, or should be putting some money aside. Then we need to talk about what we're going to do here as a group. That's all. I agree. All right. I was, you know, just bringing it up. That's all. I'm sorry, John. I'm not spending it. Believe what me. else you got there, uh, Mister? Uh, I think the and the last thing, kind of at the bottom, is uh, estimated revenue anticipated next year. I haven't changed that number up or down from the five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that I put in for F one twenty. Part of that is I don't have any information right now that 
it would be anything significantly different than that. But when we did transition to the new EPCR program, we got a, there was like a few week hiccup in billing. And so my expense reports are always a little bit behind whatever the date is. And then revenue reports is even further behind that. So I don't really have, I have maybe three months or two and a half months of fiscal year 20 revenue information right now. So I was going to wait a little bit longer to see if we can adjust that 525,000. Uh, but well, that number is always a guess. Yeah, and I think, I think it's probably, if it's going to move from that, it wouldn't be much. Um, and it remains a guesstimate until it gets certified in the future. Yeah, we know what we actually got, yeah. Um, uh, Oh, no, go ahead. No, I'm wondering why the 33% increase in workers' comp. Again, so these, those, the numbers you see for 21 are based off of the formulas that always prove to spit out higher than reality. The FY20, the FY19, those are all numbers supplied to me by Barbara, the town clerk, as actual numbers, and that's what we end up putting in in the end. So... I, I went back and tried to figure out like a percentage of what they normally are high to try to get a closer estimate, um, and I just couldn't glean that a, a better estimate out of it. So, those are placeholders that I expect to be high once Barbara gives us. And then, and then, what are other payroll costs? Remind me. Other payroll costs. Uh, so that's it's um, the clerical services for the town and Deerfield. Yeah, that's the um, indirect costs. Didn't we? Did so, we visit that person that how that was calculated last year? Uh, there were two formulas. Let me see. In terms of in, in terms of what what line items were factored into that formula? And paying ten percent of line item of certain line items didn't make any sense to us. Correct. Yes. So, um, and the number hasn't gone down. So I'm I'm wondering what. So these were supplied by the town accountant last yeah, year last as the year. different models, um, and neither one of those is the number that's reflected in the budget. So I'm wondering if I'm missing a third sheet here. Um, I think this is this is exactly the type of thing that we always talk about needing to really drill down and maybe actually right. like look at the time example, sheets and stuff like that. The example was legal expense. I, I think yeah. we all agreed that if we want to have a legal line item for scams, which we do, we should we should have that, but it should not be a percentage of the legal line item that the town of Deerfield pays. I think the discussion, or any, and again, it could be any town. Yeah, the discussion on that was we have a separate legal line item that has decreased year after year for times specifically when I'm sitting with the lawyer, um, and then the legal expenses reflected in the indirect costs are for times that the town administrator asks a question on behalf of all employees or, or things like that that SCEMS falls in as a portion of and that we couldn't be billed specifically for that smaller portion. Um, that was, I believe, the thought process behind that. Then, then I guess, and I get that, then I guess I, I think we perhaps need to have the conversation about whether the percentages of each line item should be mm -hmm. dynamic as opposed to static. I mean, it's it's just the same percentage across the board. And there are some line items here, and again, I, I don't pretend to be an expert on the on, on the different <coughs> finances, and, and that's fine. Um, there, there are some where you can say, yeah, that's 10%, that's, that's an easy one. But there are others where we could say, geez, 10% of that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think we should have that conversation, and you're looking at me like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at you because I'm looking at you. Okay. I, I thought we I thought we had this. I thought at the end of last year we we said we were going to revisit this right be between then and now. So right, and so that's, maybe that's why I'm looking at you. Right now. Which is a good revisitation because, right now. Yeah, because we had that conversation. Yeah, we did. But I and, and I think and and I think we said that because it you know. Maybe maybe you're going to use the accountant more than the town administrator or the the board of selectmen secretaries is, is included in that also. It's like 
Mm -hmm. do, and now we got our own facility, so Zach isn't over there any longer. Right. So. Right. And the when we started this organization, there was a lot more stuff. Totally get it. That's why revisiting that that now. Right. Right. Yeah. We'll see if we're addressing the budget now. We're looking at preliminary budget. Uh, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Carolyn. Oh, it, it just it depends. And the reason why I say it depends is because if, in a general normal operation, it's really just Brenda. You know, there's a lot of information going back and forth with Brenda. Brenda is on call and able to spit out whatever. So I, I feel like Brenda, the town accountant, really does um, earn her percentage. Mm -hmm. But, um, and... And, and then there's payroll, the input of the payroll. Yeah, I think, I don't think anybody's arguing that okay. these aren't like legitimate costs. I think the concern is what, like, now that we have five years right, under right. our belt, where is this reflective it, but, of reality but as far as percentages go? It depends, go? like, and, I, and again, I'm just saying depends, because if there is personnel issues, yeah. all of a sudden it sucks up a lot of time. If there's no personnel issues, and that's why I say I think we should look at this and and say what what happens you know during the year because if 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 there's no real personnel issues then there's hardly you know i wouldn't say there's all that much time let me let me ask you this but we have legal expenses and personnel and our and our admin time um in the past we've had that terribly but it going was, forward we're not gonna i don't think we're gonna have many legal expenses that relate to scams I, 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 and, I think, and I agree. And again, there should be a line item in the, in the scams budget then. I, I guess. Well, except that we pay flat fee because that's the cheapest. So we have a flat fee that gives us a certain number of hours every month. And that and that. And if you don't use it, what happens to those hours? Do they roll over or do, they, or do you lose that money? I, I, I hope they're going to roll over. Um, I don't know how. It, well, I don't, at this point, I don't think we ever have rollover, truthfully. <laughs> um. I mean, that's why one of the reasons they're not too excited about flat rates. Yeah. <laughs> no. hey, uh, we've been using our legal fees to the extent and then so. Right, and, and that's fine, but I want to make sure that SCEMS isn't subsidizing non-SCEMS legal expenses, and that's possible. Um, I do not believe so. Um, because but we don't have an itemization of what those legal expenses are and we don't we don't know what i mean we would wouldn't we be aware if well, there were legal the issues legal should be billed separately differently to the town than our flat free exactly exactly we yeah. have well, what happens is when they do in the flat fee they say who what they do of course okay and so it, it's the reason why we went to the flat fee is because it's it is cheaper, and we are saving a lot of money. And I don't think SCEMS has ever, you know, I don't know. I, we've I mean, certainly incurred some legal expenses in the past that have bill, been billed specifically to SCEMS, right? Vis-a-vis um, -vis a, a, a personnel issue of somebody who wasn't hired. Right, but that was billed right to SCEMS. It wasn't billed to correct, the Correct, correct. But then. Right, so that that's the line item stuff. Then there are things like, if it's legal related to this building, this building wouldn't exist were it not for scams, but it's a town building. You know, I I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not. But, but that money, but that money is being paid out of the money we pay for rent. Sure. Okay. So right. yeah, for yeah, that example, I mean, that, yeah, that was the right. That was yeah, the reason. No, right. As is, no so so building maintenance is that a is that a is that a line item that needs to exist anymore in this formula because we have our own building maintenance is that part of the rent no i think we have we have like supplies and occupancy for like cleaning supplies and mops right, and but that's like, like but that. that's not sixty four thousand yeah. dollars good mops um <laughs> no it's it's fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> right so but the yeah. line i'm looking at is sixty four four well that's our total budget Sixty four. Okay, so ten percent or sixty four <laughs> four. The last time I checked is six thousand four hundred. Sixty four four. What? Yeah. Right? And and so I, I those are good months. Oh oh sorry on that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um you know, the 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 the, the total I, I just think it's worthwhile to look at the well, look I, at ten percent of one hundred of, of hundred and ninety five thousand dollars 
last time I checked, is nineteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Maybe that's an exact. Maybe that's a great number, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I and, and 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 we can't have a well probably kind of conversation. We should have data oh. to support or because well, maybe, maybe it should be twelve percent. I, I don't know. Uh, well, I think we picked ten percent just because you know exactly my a point. Lot of, a lot of organizations use ten. Exactly my point. So maybe, uh-huh. but maybe you're shortchanging yourself. Maybe it should be twelve percent. Maybe it should eight percent. I don't know, and we don't know. But why are we throwing darts? What's the solution? Well, I don't know. I just throw. Them. You know what? <laughs> I, I will look into this with you know um, see what's happening. And I think, I, and I, and I feel it's important to review this on a regular basis. Absolutely. Um, because there are, you know, things, expenses, but but I, a lot of our problems have been resolved. Yeah, I know. And we and the and the software changes have have yeah. been more streamlining stuff. I know Brenda's happy to formulate whatever it is mm-hmm. she is dictated yeah. to her for. I know. The, so mm-hmm. it it's just a matter of figuring out what's mm-hmm. on us. So then. Like, do we, I, I can try to keep notes about how often I'm using, you know, I'm, I'm making phone calls or using various departments in the town, but that's not going to be a good representation of, you know, the mm-hmm. actual work the no, it's HR not, it's is doing. Five, yeah. ten, five minutes here, ten minutes Exactly, there, yeah. Not, but, you know, the selectman's office, let's just use the TA's salary. I'm going to guess we don't use 10% of Diana's time. For scams, I I I, I, I would never be able to be convinced of that. No, I, no, that's true. So I, that's I, true. I, I just think we need to. We're on camera, <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah, not an I, indictment I, on anybody. That's just. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying that that's true. I mean, I, well, there's right no way. Now, yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Um. So, we can try to come up with some other formula. I I I'm I'm, this is. To be I think fair. Although, I, although I, when, yeah. when South County was first coming into effect, you probably were using a lot of the, a 10% of the town. No question. Yeah, no question. Yeah. I, I mean, we, I, I mean, because there were so many questions. I mean, we didn't know how, what? I mean, we were putting together, you no know, enterprise fire and everything. Right, right, right. 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 It's, just time to, it, it's, it's time to put our big boy pants on. Yeah. Well, and now you have yeah. enough years of experience right. that you can start Absolutely. Looking at it, exactly. Instead of because if you just look at the first couple of years, that's going to skew it all that's the time. Right, right, right. But now that you have five going on six years, it's starting to be a more level field, and you can see what the actual expenses are, yeah. and that becomes a more real yeah. number. Right, and they're not startup costs anymore. Yeah. Right. Also, yeah. I, I'm going to suggest it not be just a function of Deerfield. I think that. I, I think that. It should involve more people from this board, okay, and maybe fine. just Zach. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I think Carolyn has to start. Carolyn has to start. Carolyn, Carolyn, as a financial representative from the town, needs to start the process. But then, when she, she, you know, in a month or two, she needs to get back to us. And then, when she has some data, then we need to look. Then we need. Then we need to help yeah. by looking at the data. Yeah. I, I would say that the. Interaction that Zach has with with Brenda has probably not dramatically changed, but I, I think the software has dramatically reduced um, payroll interaction. Right? No, we are still at, on request of the clerk's office, hand delivering filled out timesheets. And they're sitting down with you still. I thought. Well, they don't sit down with me, but like we. The, we were, yeah, it's... So you're still spending time reviewing. But that's not a time-consuming function. Our scheduling software is capable of integrating directly to HR and their accounting. And the I, last I, conversation I had was they still prefer us to deliver hand timesheets so they can enter them manually. Why into, would they... What, I don't know. Why would they, I mean... It's extra work on my end. That's and, why we spent the... Yeah. The money I, I to was just buy say, the I thought we bought the software <laughs> so that we could eliminate. Well, it's why would you do it that way? If you can autom- I, I I can understand it's a check well, and balance. She wants to be the one that's taking responsibility for putting in the hours. Well, I think there was concern about 
if without having her eyes on it, she doesn't know what data is going in before it's in the system. Right. Um, but that's, I. we needed that software for scheduling, for notification, for incident tracking, for asset tracking, things like that. One of the benefits of going with that vendor was the integration that was possible. So that was always part of the carrot. And I, I said, when you're ready, we are ready. Um, and I would so, think integration and, and, would and I would say that, that I would say that the, the, now the town I would think the town accountant would now audit that wouldn't it would no longer would want oh, I, to put I that get, in I get the every, right. every payroll I get but payroll. you would you would start audit you know now now would be it would be more like of an audit audit of every once in a while to ensure but you yeah. wouldn't go through our schedule is the official record, you know, in our program, individuals can approve their timesheet, you know, these are the hours that will be reported, and then they click approve, and then it would get automatically submitted at midnight at, you know, whatever. And some, that's easier to audit than, automation is easier to audit than manual. Well, I know. Yeah. But, 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 so, so do you got, do you as the uh, manager authorize your time? At yeah, some point? so what happens is we... We maintain that official calendar. Yeah. They also fill out like the town of yeah. Deerfield timesheets. So I get the timesheets every two weeks. Yes. And so, I manually review them. So on Monday morning, I sit down with the timesheets and I review them. I check them for accuracy. I sign off on them. If there's something that looks out of the ordinary, I refer back to the schedule and I reconcile that stuff. And then I also create like a top sheet spreadsheet because because for me and yeah. thank you. So thank you. so I enter that so that data in and then I hand deliver that over to the town hall by 9:30 in the morning so Sarah can manually take each sheet and enter it into the computer and double it's yeah so it's there, then, that's always, oh, I won't then, comment on that. I know. I, I think that's you, why our expenses are. So I low. think you and I are probably on the same. And then Brenda like and then Brenda gets the timesheets. And then I get the timesheets. <laughs> then I get the timesheets, and I review the timesheets. You're paying for someone to manually enter something that could be submitted to your systems on the stroke of a key. There is the first time it's entered by them into the schedule, and then I approve it. You know, doing the schedule, and then they enter it into their timesheet, and that's just an Excel. Excel spreadsheet that's locked down, so it takes some talent. If you forget shift differential, you screw yeah. that up. And then David is nice enough on Fridays, or on Sundays rather, he, he'll give it a once over and he'll make sure that everybody's there. If somebody forgot to submit one, you know, he'll reach out to them. Saturday morning, I look at it and then I re-enter the data into a spreadsheet. Then I hand it over to Sarah. Sarah then looks at it and it enters it into the software itself. And then that entry, so all those steps, like that game of telephone, how many hours is that? Too many. How many I, hours yeah. is that? I can't put too many in a spreadsheet. Um, I think a, an individual probably takes, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for their timesheet every pay period. So times whatever. Plus the oversight. Plus, you know, right, exactly. And then Sarah. It's 10, it's 10 15 hours. Oh, and I know, I know it's a nightmare for the office staff because like, like on Mondays where they need it by 9.30 a.m. and I'm on a medical call, if it's like nine o'clock, Sarah's like, if you don't get this to me in the next 45 minutes, like it's, I know it's a headache for them trying to get it under the wire and stuff like that too, so. Okay, well, we gotta fix this because that's, that's cost to scams that is not necessary. Well, that is our procedure. And well, you could eliminate it from the indirect cost, saying that we're not going to pay this. And not gonna have pay, a, I mean, that's your procedure, but it's 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 an out. It's the twenty first century. I know, but that's how we do our account. Well, I no, I understand. I understand that other, and again, because other, like in our town, even our town, some we don't. We don't have that automated. We don't have automated software, so we have to do a similar program. When you yeah. when you run a cop when you're when you're a cop, right? You yeah, have, right. You, it's a it's basically a paper right. time sheet. But, and then but that, that, but that because yeah. we don't we don't have an automated system. But you shouldn't be penalized because you have an automated system either. And 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 that would 
and and and, and again, I've I've been saying the same thing for years in Sunland is like payroll, and I get every every two weeks I go I have all everybody's time sheet, everybody from the school, everybody from and everybody is all hand. And you go through that? Per, yeah, you do? Sure. We do too. You you don't? No way. We ever, that's why we hired staff in town. <laughs> Yeah, but you're signing. You have to. You're signing it. We have one person that reviews the entire warrant, warrant but it's it, it. We don't duplicate efforts. Uh, I, I do it because you it's my. It without, so my you don't ever sign a, your warrant, or do you sign your warrant without looking at it? Then you scan it. You don't. It, you don't go through the page. Jeez. Well, I don't look at it. I don't look at everything, but but no, but Jonathan, a couple of years, you know, a couple of years. Ago, well, this is more than a couple of years ago. I, I, saw, I look on a bill, and there's. There, there, there's on the telephone charges. There's telephone charges to Cape Cod. This place on Cape Cod. God damn, David Wolf from using the town of Sunville in uh, telephone. But, I was but, looking for the beast whale on the yeah. beach, and he's not a whale anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but I, I'm, I'm look, but, but, and, and, and so I, and I said, and I knew where it came from. I says, I asked the town minister. I said, well, we can just talk, ask, ask, and the, and the guy. The family was on vacation to the to the Cape, and he wasn't even thinking about it. And he was making these calls, and, and it was he reimbursed the town. Yeah, I look at it. I don't look at every page. Every I don't look at every. You sort of sheet. audit to see. Yeah, I mean, people be a glance at it, but but I, I know. but I but but that's but that's your idea. That's the idea. But that's before I sign, I, but you, that's, you signed the warrant. Yeah, but the treasurer. But I trust the treasurer collector to make sure that those warrants are accurately put together. But you're responsible. But yeah. but you know what? If something happens, and I, and I will say this. Yeah, he may be. David may be responsible. You signed it. I get that. So I, I, I will just go through. Bobby seen me before at the table looking, going I mean, through right, this stuff. I, 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 anyway, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I, I spent our bureaucracy. Don't we all know about but, bureaucracy? But I, but I'll tell you what. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If, if I had a system where someone could, met, enter electronically the data, like that. I don't think I would, but I would, but you would still see a printout, and you could still review you could their still time. Still, print. Right, it's just quicker though, and it's just. But I wouldn't, and it's not five times a manual. I'm not. I'm, not, not no. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not changing what Barbara does because we. Yeah, we don't want to be more. We don't want to well, be right, more but efficient. We, but we shouldn't necessarily have to pay, pay for, for that. that. Well, it, it, one of you guys can take it on then. I mean, it's still using our staff. Oh, no. <laughs> we should move on to the next agenda item. Uh, the next agenda item is, I was just thinking that it might uh, behoove us to plan a whole year's worth of meetings in advance. Yes. Yeah, um, they're on the third Thursday of the month, unless otherwise. No. They are on the third Thursdays of the month, and I picked months and kind of grouped them into topics to also help us maybe stay focused. So um, we would skip December. Um, and then we would meet January, February um, for budgets. Mm -hmm. um, March, April, we take off. I'll be busy bouncing around town meetings. Y'all will be busy with town meetings and warrants. And then May, we would come back uh, for basically the post-town meeting um, follow-up um, and so report. You're, so you're saying um, January... Um... There is, in the back of the... Your, oh, I'm sorry. Where's your? Just, it's oh, I've, I've mapped it there. all out. It's on the last page of my text. Um, I would just say maybe March if we needed one. I, I was going to say, or at least a placeholder for it. You want to January, February, March, just mm -hmm. kind of, and then as yeah, and we can kill March if we okay. if we yep. if we, go, we can. can. Yeah, but you never know what finance committees are going to come back and say. Yeah. Right. Well, I yeah, I know. Um. So uh, then we celebrate by taking June off. Um, July and September I have as, quote, off-season business. So these are all the things that we always talk about that we want to do and then we forget about because the weather gets nice. Um, so it would be like looking at the IMA again, subcommittees, reviewing, indirect charges, all of those kinds of things not related to regular business, um, or not regular business, but budget business. Um, October we take off so we can all celebrate Halloween. Um, you know, um, the only thing I was November. just wondering, um, maybe we could skip the May 21st one and then do June because June is before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. I'm just thinking about, you know, the nightmare scenario where 
uh, one of the finance committees or one of the towns doesn't approve the budget and we have to come back and do something and then get it. We can plan that. We, and we can we always can, schedule a we meeting. We can always schedule, yes. schedule any of it. Okay. So well, you, no, I, I don't, I'm fine with Carolyn's suggestion. I'd just do June okay. instead of May. Okay, yeah. And then May. I mean, we're always, we always have to be comfortable with, if we need to scramble to schedule yeah, a meeting. Yeah, we, 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 we just post yeah. a meeting. We just post a meeting. But I, I, I don't have any problem. I just, it's just from a fiscal year point of view, I, 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 it makes sense May and July, you're skipping June, but I think from a fiscal year, it, it we would have a tendency to want to meet in Ju at the end of June if there are any problems and then mm -hmm. skip July because, you know, it's the start of the budget year. So. Yeah. Do the building. So. I mean, we, we might end up not having a July meeting or August meeting and then just go into September. Right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, so we'll say kind of looking out a year, January, February, March, June, July, September, November. Yeah. Okay. No, I, no, 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 no July. But let's mark it down potentially May 21st if there's any issues from our budgets. But chances are probably not, okay? Because um, so then we'd skip to June because that's just before the end of the fiscal year. We can... I thought we were getting rid of May. You want May in there still? Well, just, just maybe. Okay. A maybe. And the same, but then we skip July and August and we go to September. I, I can't imagine that we would have a problem with May. Were you keeping June in as well? June is the one I want to have in. Because I'd kill May then. Um, so. That's. We can always schedule something if we need to. It would be June um, 18th. It's just before the end of the fiscal year. So if we had any problems. January, February, March, May, June, July, no, September. No, 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 no May and no July. Take May out of there. Yeah. No July. Yeah. Take, take me out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's January, January, February, February March, March, June, June, September, November. Yeah. With the understanding that, that we can always. Potentially right. maybe yeah. May. Good. If there's any issues with town meeting, yep, there shouldn't sure. be any issues. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we'll resolve. Stuff. If that sounds, mm -hmm. yeah. Tom made a motion for those tentative dates. We have to vote on those? Okay. Yeah. Do we? Sure. Jonathan Second. Second. Oh, wow. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Um, just from a budgeting point of view, I think it's important to do just before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, no, I know. I just uh, might. I gotta get a new well, calendar. Welcome to the Fairmont, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Can you get those motions to the town motion. right away so they're, they? Yeah, that was that was actually my intent that I've given up. Because my calendar is tied into our calendar. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that was part of the reason why I wanted to do this. Okay. Yeah. Motion. What, what are you doing? Oh, to accept the To vote. adjourn. What are you, do, what are you doing? <laughs> you got any more? What, what are you doing? What are you I doing? just... No, I'm just... <laughs> Did you have um, M squared. Go ahead. Okay. Well, as long as there's a motion to adjourn on the floor, you can't talk about anything yeah. else, uh, technically. Well, I just... I second it. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> um, I didn't know if you knew about this, yes. Zach. Okay. Yeah, I do. I get all of those. Yeah. There are EMS credits. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and um, I just got approved um, on Homeland Security on Tuesday for the tabletop exercise, Great Flood of 2020. I don't have a date yet, but it will be in the spring. Is there going to be a flood in 2020? Well, if, if a dam lets go on the Deerfield. So we're talking about evacuation. And so I was hoping It's been a few years. It's been... Can you guys please shore up your dams? Eight years. Not our dam, just Whittingham. It's a uh, great <laughs> river hydro. So for my anyway, it causing all this trouble, you know. So I was hoping you would... It was them that wiped out all the bridges yeah, during the eight flood. We don't so have they a couldn't date. figure out how to get rid of the hurricane yeah, on the ground. Yeah, I just got it approved, so um, it will be sometime in the spring. Okay, great. All in favor of adjourning, thank you. Oh my.